This is one of the GNS3 topologies which we'll configure as part of this course. This GNS3 topology is utilizing the GNS3 VM and I've loaded iOS vLayer2 images to the GNS3 VM. In addition, I'm using a Cisco iOS router image also running within the GNS3 VM. And I have that image available on both the local GNS3 server, in other words, running within Windows, as well as on the GNS3 VM. Under Edit, I've gone to Preferences, and I've configured an image running on the local server, as well as the GNS3 VM. You don't have to configure the image in both places. I've just done that for various demonstrations in the course. I've also got an NPM server, which I'll use to manage this network using SNMP. I'll configure the various parts of this network throughout the course, but at the end of the course, I'll have all of these videos together in one place. So if you wanna watch all of the config in one go, you can do that. Now, don't worry too much if you don't know all the terms that I'm gonna be using in this explanation. We'll be discussing this throughout the course, but this topology gives us a nice scenario to build upon and shows you how the different technologies that we're learning about can be implemented in a proper network. In this topology, we have two core switches as well as two access switches, but pretend that we have more than two access switches. Configuring more than two is kind of redundant in what we're doing here, but I'll perhaps extend this topology and make it more complex to show you a larger topology as part of this scenario. Various things need to be configured in this network. We have to configure IP addressing. We have to configure VLANs. We have to configure VTP or VLAN trunking protocol. We've got to configure inter VLAN routing between the various IP addresses. We've got to configure links such as these as trunk ports. These links, gigabit 02 on the access switches need to be configured as access ports. The reason why is that this router, router one, is going to be configured in VLAN 10 and is going to act as a host in the network. So we're actually using a Cisco iOS image, but it's going to mimic a host device. The same with this router, which is going to be configured in VLAN 20. So this will also act as a PC in our topology Router 2 is acting like PC2 in our topology, but rather than using PCs to do this, I wanna show you how to configure routers with static routes and various other options to enable connectivity in the network. Router 3 is going to act as our gateway to the outside world. So this router will be configured with NAT or network address translation. And in actual fact, it'll be using port address translation or PAT to NAT these routers acting as PCs onto the internet so that they can access sites such as google.com and others. This topology is gonna to run as a layer two topology, so we need to configure spanning tree. Spanning tree is enabled by default on Cisco switches, but in this example, we want to optimize spanning tree, so we'll configure PVST with this switch as the root for VLANs one and VLAN 10, and this switch as the root for VLAN 20. So router two acting as PC2 is gonna send traffic to the core using this uplink, whereas router one acting as PC1 is gonna send traffic to the core using this uplink. We also have to think about the default gateways. If router one acting as PC1 has switch one as its default gateway, Switch one will only be able to do inter VLAN routing for router one or PC one when it's up. However, if switch one goes down, this PC will no longer be able to ping PC two or be able to access the internet. So we're going to want to implement HSRP or hot standby routing protocol to ensure that the default gateways of the PCs in our topology are still available when one of the switches go down. So we'll configure HSRP for our user PCs in this topology so that they can continue working even when one of the core switches goes down. 
This topology has redundancy in it, but spanning tree will block ports to stop loops in the topology and may stop ports that you least expect. So we need to optimize spanning tree by not only making switch one of the root for some VLANs and switch two the root for other VLANs, but we also want to enable link aggregation or ether channel on these two core links. Spanning tree is gonna block one of these ports, which negates the purpose of having multiple ports in the core between our core switches. So we're gonna to wanna to bond these two links together in a link aggregation. Once we've configured the network, we'll test connectivity between PC1 and PC2, and we'll test failover to ensure that our network provides redundancy when one of the switches in the core goes down. We'll also, as mentioned, test connectivity to the internet, and thus we'll need to enable a NAT on router three. We'll also need to enable routing protocols on our routers and inject a default route from router three. So we'll need to enable OSPF or EIGRP on our core devices and then advertise the default internet route from router three to both core switches. We'll also need to enable simple network management protocol or SNMP on our switches so that network performance monitor can manage the network. In addition, we're gonna to wanna to use a syslog server to centrally store our log information. So we'll use NPM to receive syslog messages from our devices. I'll include a link below the video where you can download a free trial version of Network Performance Monitor. So there's a lot to do to get this topology to work. I'll explain the configuration as I'm going through this, but for the basic theory, please refer to the relevant modules in the course. So, lots to do. Let's get started configuring this topology.